Rocky IV is affectionately remembered by Rocky fans as the movie in which Sylvester Stallone single-handedly saved America from a Soviet invasion by overcoming the odds and knocking out the superhuman Ivan Drago. Motivated by his close friend Apollo Creed's death at the hands of Drago, it took Rocky every ounce of American heroism that he had to beat the massive Soviet. His victory, fueled by revenge, clearly boosted US morale at a time when it was threatened by Soviet influence. It is no wonder then, that a mere six years after the events of Rocky IV, the Soviet Union came toppling down in a cascade of brick and mortar. But what if it never happened? What if Apollo Creed never died? What if Apollo Creed beat Ivan Drago? This is Revisionist Cinema, Rocky IV. As Rocky IV begins, Rocky and Apollo walk into a dark gym and have their unsanctioned, untelevised exhibition fight with no ref or timekeeper. Wanna ring the bell? All right. Ding, ding. Well, no ref anyway. With Apollo saying that he just needs to know for himself that he can beat Rocky one on one. Why would beating Rocky in a non-title match with no one finding out but himself be so important to Apollo? We'll get back to that later on. They celebrate Paulie's birthday and Rocky gives him a life-size talking robot. Um, I... I guess that's a good gift. <laughs> oh. Yo, I wanted a sports car for my birthday. Not no walking trash can. After this, Apollo is in his pool playing with his dogs as a news program about Ivan Drago comes on the TV. Ivan's manager, Nikolai Koloff, puts out a challenge to Rocky Balboa. Apollo sees this and immediately gets worried. Why, you ask? Well, ever since Apollo lost his title to Rocky, he's been wanting to avenge that loss, which has been a point of embarrassment for him on a world stage. Essentially, Apollo lost by one second to a fighter who, on paper, was seen as inferior in every way. Rocky was too old, had bad technique, was a southpaw, couldn't move well, and had one of the worst defensive styles ever seen in boxing. So losing to Rocky on that grand a stage, and in the manner in which he did, would have obviously made Apollo question his own abilities and even drive him into depression. As a result of the loss, Apollo lost the reputation he had in the boxing world and even began to be ridiculed by stronger opposition. Get out of my face! Look Don't need nothing you got no more! Look Don't need no hair spin messing up my corner. And you better get that bad look off your face before I knock it off! In Rocky III, Apollo looks on in disappointment and anger as Clubber Lang destroys Rocky in under two rounds. He's not angry at what's happening. He's angry because he's watching Clubber do what he can never do in two fights, and that is completely own Rocky. Deep down, Apollo also knows that he can never win the belt back from Clubber. It didn't even occur to him to even try and challenge Clubber to a fight, because the risk of being made a fool again would be too great to overcome. So, Apollo decides to take Rocky under his wing and teach him everything he knows to win back the belt from Clubber, so then Apollo could then re-challenge Rocky for it at a later time. So now, standing in his pool, with the dust barely settled from the clubber fight, Apollo sees another monster fighter challenging Rocky for the belt Apollo believes is rightfully his. Man, what's a brother gotta do? He does the only thing he can do. Get to Drago before Drago can get to Rocky. Apollo's reasoning is if he can take out this untested, unranked fighter early, it will kill off any title shot Drago would get, and also raise Apollo's standing in the eyes of the boxing community, where he would be a credible contender. Rocky's age also makes it unlikely that he will have many more title defenses, so Apollo must strike early to stake his claim. It's high risk, high payoff for Apollo. There's just one little problem. He completely underestimates the ability of the big Soviet. Whatever he hits, he destroys. It doesn't appear at all that Apollo did any training for this fight. Instead, electing to participate in an elaborate dance number which, in all reality, probably tired him out and contributed to his death. I mean, really, what boxer does this? Also, the fact that Tony, Apollo's longtime trainer and father figure, allowed this whole thing to go down is even more disturbing. Yeah, you killed him, Tony. You killed him. What happened to Apollo was tragic, completely over the top and ridiculous, but tragic nonetheless. But it could have all been avoided if he took the fight just a little more seriously. According to Mickey in Rocky II, the average fighter spends 10 weeks training. Let's say Apollo, instead of coordinating with James Brown, spent even half that time training, as he looks to be already in good shape and had years of experience behind him. He stays completely focused on Drago during that time. He digs deep and gives it his all, 
shown an incredible heart. He goes the distance with Drago and by some miracle is rewarded the decision win. The damage that Apollo suffers, however, is extensive. The beating is so severe, Apollo is laid up in the hospital for several weeks recuperating, and doctors fear that he could have suffered permanent damage from the blows. He's alive, but he may never fight again. His dream of regaining the title is gone. Apollo enters a deep depression as he struggles to come to terms over the situation. And despite the platitudes of his trainer telling him he had a great match, Man, I won, but I didn't beat him. Apollo is still unsatisfied. He also begins to resent Rocky, who is in no rush to put the belt up against anybody, instead opting to stay home and play with his robot. <laughs> Apollo decides, against everyone's good advice, to stage a comeback. Meanwhile, somewhere in Siberia, the loss to Apollo has not only embarrassed Drago, but also the entire Soviet Union on the world stage. Drago is in hiding, along with a team of super smart Soviet scientists preparing his own comeback. The super smart scientists work day and night figuring out ways to biologically improve Drago and turn him into a half-human, half-cyborg fighting machine that will take over the world. Several months pass, and Apollo has been working non-stop to get his fighter's body back. He is quicker than ever and in the best shape of his life. Rocky, however, has spent these last months still playing with his robot while being goaded into retirement by Adrian for the 80th time. Apollo sees this as the perfect opportunity to strike. Let's backtrack again a bit. As mentioned earlier, prior to their exhibition match in Rocky 3, Apollo kept telling Rocky that he owes him a favor. Uh, you owe me a favor. I know. It is assumed the favor is the match they have. It is not. The favor is for Rocky to give Apollo another shot at the title. The match was just a way for Apollo to find out if he could still hang with Rocky in the ring. In the film Creed, Rocky tells Apollo's son Adonis that it was Apollo who won the unsanctioned bout. Now, you can argue that Rocky was just saying that to make the kid feel better about his dad. But really, why would a 60-something year old Rocky need to lie about that in this point in his life? Also, lying was never a characteristic that Rocky possessed throughout the series, so we have to be inclined to believe him here. Knowing that he can beat Rocky in a legit match, and knowing that this is his last time he can challenge for the belt, Apollo flat out tells Rocky he wants a title shot. Rocky is shocked and confused as he thought they were best friends. He refuses to fight Apollo, instead telling him he wants to hang it up, as he has nothing to prove anymore. This angers Apollo, who tells Rocky he owes him that favor and that Rocky stole the title from him. In an effort to goad Rocky out of retirement, Apollo stages a public press conference, berating him and declaring Rocky is too scared to fight him. This strategy worked before. What better way to get a person to fight you than pretty much calling him a woman on national TV? Rocky reluctantly accepts the match. His heart isn't in this one, and we all know what happens when Rocky's heart isn't in it. Apollo was able to beat Rocky inside of five rounds and stun the world. After the match, Rocky announces his retirement and goes back home, seemingly to play with his robot. <laughs> Apollo's celebration, however, is cut short. Drago's manager resurfaces and publicly challenges Apollo to a rematch for the title. Apollo says, well, I already beat your man. Nikolai says, no, you didn't. Uh, yes, I did. You won my decision. Well, it still counts. No, it's cheap win and you cheap American. Son, look at this outfit and call me cheap again. We want a rematch for title. Well, you ain't getting it. I feel bad for your wife because she never know what a real man is. I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much how it goes down. Apollo takes the bait and accepts the rematch with Drago. The experts predict Apollo to pick up the victory in his first defense. Everyone is expecting Apollo to win. The match is set to take place on the 4th of July, with Apollo planning to come to the ring riding an actual tank draped in the American flag. But no one is prepared when they see the new and improved Drago. He's at least twice the size he was before, and Apollo's all like, Oh, f me. And Paul is all like, Why are they carrying him? And Rocky's all like, How much do you think he eats? And Hulk Hogan's all like, To all my love slaves out there, Thunderlips is here, in the flesh, baby. Oh wait, that's the uh, wrong movie, sorry. Anyway, Drago makes quick work of Apollo, 
who can't even get one punch before Tony throws in the towel. Drago is the new world champion, and Apollo leaves boxing a disgrace to the American public. Drago's win creates a domino effect, as Soviets of every athletic type systematically infiltrate American sports. They dominate the 1988 Olympic Games, and their reach begins to spread globally. Soviet morale is rising at an incredible pace. Instead of tearing down the Berlin Wall, the Soviets invade West Germany, fueled by biogenic superior super soldiers that all look suspiciously like Drago. Western Europe is no match for the Drago army, and they fall country by country, each flag being replaced by the sickle and hammer until before you know it, the whole world is covered by one gigantic red commie blanket. So next time you lament the death of Apollo Creed, think twice because the alternative is far worse. Apollo's death literally saved America and gave you the freedoms you enjoy today. We must thank Stallone for killing off one of the series' most beloved characters. I won't thank him for Rocky V, however. That I just won't do. Sorry, Stallone. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little journey through cinematic alternate reality. If you did, show some love with a like and subscribe for more videos.